here we go. Kia ora team, my name is Ben. Now, why don't we over oxygenate our COPD patients? If your answer is because it's going to knock off their hypoxic drive, then stop. That's been debunked. Let's look at the real reason. Okay, why do we breathe? We have chemoreceptors and they're located centrally in our brainstem, our medulla oblongata, and what they sense is carbon dioxide and hydrogen. When our carbon dioxide and our acidity get too high, they increase our drive to breathe so we can breathe out that carbon dioxide. Good, so that's our hypercapneic drive. And then we have peripheral chemoreceptors and they're in our aorta and our carotids and they sense when our oxygen levels are getting too low and then they top up our respiratory drive. So that's our hypoxic drive. So this is us in a normal human being, not COPD. So our main driver, big, big main driver, is this hypercapneic drive. And hypoxic is just our little backup. Now with COPD, we get retention of some carbon dioxide. So some people tend to live with higher levels of carbon dioxide. Our central chemoreceptors get a little desensitized so we can live with higher levels of CO2. But we don't switch to a hypoxic drive. Even in COPD, the main driver of respiration is our hypercapneic. Too much carbon dioxide, let's start breathing it out. And our hypoxic drive is just a little thing. All right, let's talk a little bit more about COPD. If we have areas of our lung that aren't participating in gas exchange, if they're more than a little bit dysfunctional, like here's our good alveoli, and here's an alveoli that's got gas trapping, poor elasticity, um, like in our emphysema COPD patient, there'd be no point in sending blood here because it's not gonna participate in gas exchange. So what our body does is it's really clever, we vasoconstrict. We make our blood vessels really small around our damaged parts of the lung. And then in the parts that are good and healthy, then we can have all this good blood flow going there. So that's our pulmonary vasoconstriction in response to damaged airways and damaged alveoli. So now with our COPD patient, if we crank up the oxygen, then some oxygen is going to get through and then these, these capillaries around the poor alveoli are going to sense the oxygen and say, oh, we can open up again. So if they open up and we get more blood flow into the poor ventilated areas of our lung, that's going to take blood away from our healthy lung tissue. So now, we're gonna get a buildup of carbon dioxide because we're sending blood to the place that doesn't involve much gas exchange and we're taking blood away from the areas that have been helping us. Over oxygenating causes our blood vessels in the damaged part of our lungs to open up again, vasodilate, which now contributes to a greater ventilation perfusion mismatch and buildup of CO2. Okay, that's one reason why we don't want to over oxygenate. The other reason is our carbon dioxide and our oxygen travel on hemoglobin. The Haldane effect states if we have lots of oxygen, then it's going to be a bully and kick carbon dioxide off the hemoglobin. So if we over oxygenate people, then oxygen kicks off CO2 off the hemoglobin. So it's going to be not as efficient in transporting our CO2 to get rid of it. So this is the second way in which we're going to increase CO2 levels in our COPD patient when we over oxygenate them. All right, so the next step is we're jamming them with oxygen, thinking we're being helpful. We've got the ventilation perfusion mismatch. We've got the Haldane effect. So now our CO2 levels are increasing. And with that, our acidity is going to be increasing in our poor COPD patient. 
this is going to lead to CO2 narcosis, which is where this acidity is going to cause that patient to have lower levels of consciousness, decrease their respiratory drive, and proceed into a coma. So does this mean we have to avoid oxygen for all our, all our COPD patients? So heavens no. Our normal SpO2 should be above 92% for a, a healthy person. If someone has COPD, with all the problems we talked about, then we can expect their oxygenation levels to be slightly lower. So we want to aim between 88 to 92. This means we can still give oxygen, and we should give oxygen, to maintain 88 to 92. So studies have found that we have poor outcomes if our patient's oxygen levels are too high or too low. So 88 to 92 is that sweet spot that we should titrate oxygen levels to in our COPD patients. All right, team, happy studying.